How do you explain it? Why did that happen? Uh, you know, I think the the brutality of what happened, obviously, the, the families and, and the, the victims themselves, lots of kids were injured. So this isn't just a matter of children that died and their families mourning the death of those children. This is also uh, dozens of, of families dealing with children who've been injured, some of whose those injuries are chronic and, and you know, they continue to cause uh, a lot of pain and suffering. Um, I think, you know, for someone like me and for many of us who weren't there and who weren't directly sort of affected, I mean, as Pakistanis, as human beings, I think all over the world, we were all affected to some extent. But if you weren't directly part of the, part, you know, in, in the line of fire, you step back and you think, how did that happen? You know, why did that happen? I mean, it happened as a culmination in many ways of almost a decade of ignoring, uh, you know, a society and a state that had essentially largely ignored the domestic, uh, indigenous, organic uh, threat that violent extremism had begun to uh, pose. Uh, and, and it wasn't a threat that was empty. It was a threat that has consumed now over 50,000 lives. It's consumed the lives of uh, almost 10,000 soldiers and policemen. So, so this wasn't an empty threat. And yet the, it, it took the force of that brutality of that atrocity exactly one year ago uh, to essentially stay, shake Pakistan out of its stupor. And a lot of kinetic actions that have taken place since then uh, have demonstrated the, 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 the power and, and the abilities of the Pakistani state when it is uh, awake and alive to the threat uh, that it's facing.